Uh, hello everyone, thank you for attending this talk. Uh, in this talk we are going to go through creating how exactly we can create special REST APIs under, under 30 minutes using GeoDjango. So of course uh, this is like an exaggeration of course uh, when you have to create very simple APIs you can do it under 30 minutes but we will see what are different things that are possible with GeoDjango and how exactly we can, uh, we can work on that. Uh, this is possible because GeoDjango is an uh, extension to a very famous Python framework known as Django and uh, with using GDAL, Geos, PyProj, it's, uh, it's possible to, to actually use uh, geospatial data in a way it is meant to be in, uh, in Django. A uh, little bit uh, information about me, so I'm a full stack developer, I'm an open source contributor, I started contributing to a few projects. Uh, can you go to the next one? Yeah, so I'm a, a freelance JS developer. I work uh, with front end, back end both. I started contributing to a few of the open source projects such as GeoStyler in past couple of months and hopefully I'll be contributing more. Uh, apart from development, I also create a lot of content around the open source GIS. Uh, you can check out my blogs, my uh, YouTube videos. And for all social handles, let it be Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, you can uh, search for my social handle and send me a request. I'll be more than happy to talk to you. Uh, so I'm assuming that you know uh, these four things, Django, Django REST framework, GIS and uh, REST protocols. Uh, we will be, we'll be just going to, uh, we will be just going through a quick recap about all these things, but I'm hoping that you have already worked with, uh, with all of this. So for example, Django, Django is a Python framework that is meant to, meant to scale, meant to be secured and uh, <clears throat> it actually works on MVT model which stands for model view and template. So whatever your database, uh, whatever, you, whatever your database structure is, you actually create models out of that and then whatever is your logic that you want to write uh, and, and execute whenever you are hitting any URL, let it be static or dynamic, you write that in view and your HTML part actually goes inside template. Uh, Django uses Jinja uh, 2 template engine which is very amazing because it helps you to write dynamic uh, dynamic HTML content. That means that if you have if you have to create a website and if you have navbar and, and footer and sidebar, you just create one HTML and you you actually put it as, as let's say like navbar HTML and then you can reuse it whenever you want. Not just entire HTML but you can of course also change the content inside that HTML. And that is what makes it SEO optimized because you can just create a base HTML, add some meta tags and then it will be, be used in, in every, every page. Apart from that, uh, Django also has a very good uh, community support and you can see that it's already very famous among, uh, on, on GitHub as well. Uh, it has its own server so to run a Django project you don't need to, uh, you don't need to rely on any other server, you just go python manage.py run server and, and Django automatically starts its, uh, its own server. Uh, Django is, is, is built on top of like apps. So whenever you will install Django you, when, and when you go to settings.py file you will see that it's all apps. So even if you add new app to Django you will have to mention that even if you add any other Python package you will have to mention that uh, and, and that's what makes it robust and, and very, uh, very easy to use. A lot of famous uh, uh, companies such as Instagram, Mozilla, uh, Pinterest all of them use Django. Second thing that we are uh, that that I expect that you have worked with is Django REST framework, which is a very famous Python package built uh, to to help you to take all the magic that Django has and actually create uh, RESTful APIs uh, on top of it. Uh, there are various things that actually goes into creating a REST API, uh, such as uh, creating a serializer, which actually can help you to to import and export your model data as a, as a JSON as a JSON data. Apart from that, uh, REST framework also allows us to create authentication, uh, let it be session authentication or token authentication right out of the bat, but you are not only limited to that, you can, uh, you can obviously use any other authentication system as well. Uh, uh, DRF also allows you, to, allows you to create a uh, permission classes, so for example, if you want to create a REST API where only admin can, can use it, 
to edit while other people can can go ahead and, and just read the data. You can do that by simply adding a permission classes. Django has a lot of permission classes in built, but you are not again limited to that. You are more than welcome to create your own permission classes and, and then use them. It also supports filtering and pagination right out of the back. And as we move forward, we will have a greater uh, look at that. Uh, the one thing that I want to talk most about over here is GeoDjango, which is a GIS extension of Django, uh, which actually allows us to use uh, GIS-enabled models. That means we can create different types of uh, geometries, uh, raster data inside, uh, inside Django. We can also create special queries. Uh, as I mentioned, with Django and Django Risk Framework, we can create filters, we can create uh, uh, normal metadata queries, but actually by using GeoDjango, we can write queries which, uh, which runs on a, on a special data. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention about Django is that Django comes with an uh, admin panel right, uh, right out of the bat. You don't need to install anything. You can just start using admin panel, which allows you to, to create users and also talk with all the database models that you have created. Uh, by installing GeoDjango, you can also see map. And then uh, on that map, you can do things such as add your data, let it be geometry. Or, or uh, even raster files. Uh, next, GeoDjango, uh, GeoDjango supports a lot of databases, as you can see. Uh, it supports Postgres, uh, Specialite, MySQL, and Oracle. Uh, and the official documentation will, will walk you through all the different things that you can do with different types of databases. Uh, so far, PostGIS is the uh, most supported one, I would say, because uh, like 100% of the functions that are written in GeoDjango are supported by PostGIS. And, uh, and, and of course, like depending upon your use case and what functions you want to use, you can uh, check out the official documentation. Uh, to, install, uh, to install GeoDjango, it can be a little bit tricky because a lot of these libraries depend upon the operating system. But again, official documentation is very crisp, very clear, and works almost every time. So if you're on uh, Linux or Mac, you can simply use something like a Conda environment to create uh, to create your own environment and install all the libraries. Uh, if you're on Windows, you can use uh, OS, uh, OS Geo 4W installer and that will do the trick for you. Uh, so Geos, uh, Geos we actually need for uh, computational uh, computations of geometry. Proj we need for projection system. GDAL, as we all know, is a, uh, is a translational library for, for vector and raster data. Uh, Geo IP is for uh, getting, the IP, uh, getting the geolocation information based on the terminal's IP address. And PostGIS and Specialites, uh, obviously, these are the databases that, that we usually work with. Uh, when you create new Django project, it by default will have a, a SQLite support in built and SQLite file in built. But if you want to move from SQLite to PostGIS, that is, uh, that is not a problem. You can definitely do that. Uh, to set up, uh, to, to set up the uh, GeoDjango uh, Geo project, you only need to add this uh, django.contrib.gis in the installed apps. As I said, everything is, is apps in Django. So whenever you will, uh, you will install any library or anything like that, you will need to mention that in the installed app, uh, install apps list. So uh, this is not the only thing that we need to do. When we actually work on more detailed case scenario, we can actually add more things to settings.py. Uh, but this is obviously the most important one. Uh, next we have is models. So let's have a look at how exactly models can be created uh, using, using geometry field. So here you can see that uh, we have uh, Pokemon centers where name, master, and rat uh, ratings are something that, that is uh, metadata. Of course, it's a character field and integer field. But the last one that we have is a center, which is actually a point field. So Django supports point, line, polygon, uh, multi-point, multi-line, multi-polygon, and also raster. Uh, but raster is just for post-GIS. So, so you have to keep that in mind whenever you are working with uh, GeoDjango. Uh, raster, uh, raster is also supported. And, and you have to keep in mind that the data that you want to send to the database must be always in a long lag format. So this is one of the confusion that, that I personally, uh, I personally feel all the time, but that's why I, uh, I, I decided to, to mention it over here. Um, and data can be exposed as a WKT, WKB, GeoJSON right out of the bat. So once the data is, uh, once you feed the data, 
you can actually start using that data and by default Django will support WKT format so whenever you are getting the data back or whenever you want to push the data you will have to do it using WKT. Uh, but of course there are workarounds and we will have a look at them uh, now. Uh, <clears throat> For uh, when when we when we create the model for like let's say point field or or polygon field, there are few arguments that we can pass, such as SRID. Uh, we can we can define what SRID do we want to do we want to work with. We can also define the dimension, whether the data is going to be 2D or whether the data is going to be 3D. We can also define uh, whether we want that uh, that particular column in our database as a geometry or a geography. So this is very important that if you, if you want to work with geography, you simply mention geography is equal to true and it will it'll do the trick for you. But again, uh, keep in mind that geography will only work with uh, lat long and not with any other uh, coordinate systems. Uh, next we have is a Django REST framework specifically designed for GIS. So Using this, we can actually also create REST APIs which uses GeoJango's capabilities uh, to, to work with the spatial data. So <clears throat> if you remember, uh, as I said, that when we work with Django REST framework, we create serializers which actually allows us to talk with the data in a JSON format. And with GIS, we can create actually geo serializers, which uh, the, the use of that we will uh, we'll definitely see in, uh, in upcoming slides. Apart from that, we can also create uh, special filters and point and distance queries and things like that. Again, to set up the, uh, uh, to set up the Django REST framework GIS Python package, we need to mention that in installed apps. And there are, again, many settings that we can do. So for example, when we, when we work with uh, authentication or filter or pagination, these are all extra settings that, that we can mention in the settings.py file if we want to change, of course, the default settings. And as soon as you install uh, Django, REST, uh, Django REST framework, uh, as soon as you install GeoDjango, you will immediately see that the results that you are getting as a WKT you will start seeing uh, at least the geometry as a, as a JSON format. So that's one improvement that we get right out of the bat when we install GeoDjango. And uh, <clears throat> now let's talk about serializers. How exactly can we get the data from model in a, in a proper, uh, proper GeoJSON format? So we, we generally using a REST framework, we, we create serializers.py file where we mention that we will be dealing with the Pokemon centers, which is our model. And here, we can mention what will be our geo field. So in this case, center is my geo field because I'm using center as, a, as my geometry column name as well. Uh, once we do that, we can also assign ID field, which actually will create uh, whatever is there in this particular column in our row as the ID of that particular feature. So once we do that, you can immediately see the results that now not only the, the geometry, but the entire, uh, entire data is properly in a GeoJSON format. And here you can see that the name which we defined as an ID field is now the actual ID over there. And this is how by just adding a, a serializer, we can get the data from uh, uh, earlier as a WKT, we were getting the data as WKT, but now we are getting the data as a as a GeoJSON. And we can also see this difference while posting the data. So earlier, as I mentioned that whenever uh, we are posting the data, we have to send the WKT back. But once we use uh, uh, GeoRest framework, we can actually send the, the feature as a, as a body and it will still take, the, still take, still take that as a, as a data. But we have to be sure that the properties, uh, the name of the property is the key of that particular uh, uh, row is actually matching with the with the column name because this data will be again converted back to to columns and then will be stored. Uh, if you don't have geometry in your model, that's not a problem. You can also create geometry on the fly. So to do that, we actually use geometry serializer uh, method field. So for example, here I have created this buffer, and in this case, I'm particularly I'm particularly using the center which was which was also a geometry, but what I want to do is I want to actually, instead of sending the, the point, I want, uh, I want to send the buffer. 
So what do I do is I actually create this get buffer function where I'm returning the polygon and I'm, uh, this is just a random extent where I'm adding one degree and, and removing one degree. And here you can see that I can use that uh, geo field buffer uh, which, which I mentioned over here. So if you have, let's say, lat and long as your column names, that is still fine. You can actually create geometry on the fly and then use it. Next is we'll see how, how pagination works. This is uh, one of the problem with GeoJSON is that as, as the number of features increases, it, it really makes GeoJSON heavy. So this is a very good approach where we can actually set the pagination and it will, it will take limited number of features in, in each request. Uh, by default, by default, the uh, by default Django REST framework supports 100 features in each each request. But you you can change uh, you can change that by by mentioning how many features do you want in e each request in settings.py file, and you can see that not only uh, pagination is working, but also we get these two new properties known as next and previous, which uh, which uh, which makes our life very easy because we can just hit that uh, hit that particular URL and get a next or previous data. And not only that, uh, here you can see that the page is equal to two. That that page, particularly the uh, the the parameter, we can also change it to whatever name that we want. Uh, filters. I think this is going to be one of the most important thing because. Uh, we want to see how exactly we can filter our data using using special capabilities. So geofilters, uh, as I mentioned that <clears throat> in REST framework, uh, by just mentioning that what type of filters that you want, so for example, the default is Django backend filter, you are able to actually use any of your columns and then create filtering on, on, on top of that. So if it's a, a character column, then you can do filtering such as whether whatever you want to search is equal to that or is like that or starts with that, end with that. If it's an integer, then you can do less than, greater than. Or if you want to create your own filter, for example, if you want to see whether the date given is between two dates, you can actually create your own custom filters as well. And with geo filters, you can actually use the special capabilities uh, to create filters. So for example, this one is a filter based on bounding box where uh, we, will, we will just define a filter that is available by default which is in bbox filter and using this filter we will be able to check whatever bounding box that we are passing in the, uh, <clears throat> in the URL, whatever data that we get inside that bounding box, only that will be returned. And at the last, uh, we add this bbox filter include overlapping which means that if your data is polygon or line and even if it is overlapping it will uh, return. That is totally up to you if you want to keep it true or, or false. And this will, this will work something like this where you pass a uh, bounding box and of course minimum, uh, minimum longitude, minimum latitude, max long and max lat and that's how the, the format will be and it will return the data in a GeoJSON format. Now again uh, here as you can see that uh, the reason why I said that we can create uh, APIs under 30 minutes is that you don't have to do anything. You just have to mention that what filter do you want to use and it will automatically start using it. So that's the, that's the power of Geo, uh, Geo Django and REST framework. Next we have is a filter based on XYZ tile. So if you want to, uh, <clears throat> if you want to use your data as a, as a TMS, you can also do that by providing TMS tile filter. And here we will be providing uh, zoom X and Y of, of that particular uh, a region and it will it will return the data for you. For example, in this case, I am at a five zoom level and x value is 22 and y is 14 and it will return the data for you. Uh, to get these values, of course, depending upon what client you are using, let it be leaflet or or, or open layers or or map libre, map box, uh, all of them have have features where uh, where you can get this data. Uh, then we have filter based on distance from point. So here you can see that even though the, the point is in lat long, I am passing the distance in meters. This is because, again, this is an inbuilt function, distance to point filter, and, uh, and this will just work. So it will take long and lat as 78.45 and 11.81, and distance as 10,000 meters. That means like 10 kilometers, and it will, it will return the data. Uh, just like that, we also have one more, uh, one more filter. Uh, I, I'm not sure if that's in the slide, uh, which, which actually when you give your lat long and when you, uh, when you give the distance, it will actually give you the data in order of which is the closest to, to your, uh, your point. So 
these are all things that we that we generally use whenever we are creating rest api there are so many things that you can directly add to to this type of list api views such as authentication permissions to um, to actually uh, make it more robust and and specific for your use case uh, if you want to learn more about it you can follow my newsletter and my youtube channel uh, where i'll be uploading a geo django and a gis rest framework related course very soon and of course uh, if you want to talk to me about about anything uh, in this you you are feel, uh, feel free to uh, connect me with me on uh, on my channels so yeah that's all any questions thank you